So let's get started. Right here we have our standard 18 by 24 inch canvas, but you use whatever canvas works best for you. Um, and we put a very thin coat of liquid white. Now this just makes the canvas nice and wet and slick for the paint. And the colors we have today are very limited. We have titanium white, uh, midnight black, compression blue. So let's get started. First we're gonna take the almighty two inch brush. And we're just gonna mix a little bit of black and blue or blue and black, wherever you prefer. And put that right, actually right on the canvas brush. And try not to have too much paint. You don't need a lot right here. And we'll just go ahead and do some crisscross shots across the sky. Just like that. If you'd like this to be a little more stormier and gray, I would suggest maybe putting a little more black in there. And just like any horizon, you want it to be darker at the top and then slowly get lighter as it goes to the bottom. And now we'll just get ready to brush strokes by going back and forth. All right, now while we have this color, let's, uh, we're just gonna run across the bottom right here. And we're just gonna create some water at the bottom. Make sure you leave a little bit of white in the middle though. That'll be your sheen for it. And you just wanna make sure you're going from one end and going inward. If you start in the middle, you're gonna create a mark to be hard to with. There. Now, how about we, uh, let's wash off the old brush. I always wash off my brushes using photos thinner. If you, you want to make sure you use the odorless thinner, any other one, you just you're going to be some popular person in the house. And we just beat the double out of it. All right, let's take fan brush. And we'll just go straight into that titanium white. All right, and with that, just load up the brush, and we're just gonna dance it across the sky and create some pretty little clouds. Just like that. Try not to spend too much time in one place, or else you'll get big cotton balls in the sky. We don't want that. And two inch brush. Nice dry tuning brush. We're just trying to flip out that cloud. Now, we're gonna add another layer. You wanna make sure you're doing it one at a time to bring the clouds forward. And then some white, and then And just dance right from there. Make sure that when you're going back from our paint, you wipe off any excess blue paint that might have picked up from the canvas. And like I did before, we're just gonna fluff that out. All right, now going back to our fan brush, loading that right up. And we'll make some right here. You can just make cloud after cloud after cloud. Again, two inch brush. Just look it out. Now let's get a, let's get another fan brush. 
I mean, we're just going to move right into some of that uh, dark color. And now a little bit of white. We're going to create sort of a gray color here. Oh my god, he's pretending to be Bob. What? I forgot his name. Also, if you please silence your microphone, that would be wonderful. And right there we have our gray color. And we're just going to create some darker clouds up here, maybe. Make it a little lighter. There we go. Maybe we just have some lovely stormy clouds. And just like the other one, we just fluff that out. And then maybe, just maybe, maybe some other white ones just kind of snuck out of it. I don't know. That's up to you. This is your painting in your world. And like before, we'll just flip it. Right, now let's blend the whole sky. But when at home, when you have unlimited time, you can do as many clouds as you want. You just fill the whole sky up. But make sure you do it one at a time. Okay, let's take that brush you had with the dark. And we're just going to go more into this black and blue, or blue and black, and that's all we have. Yeah, let's create some mountains. Everybody loves mountains. And we're just gonna kind of make a general shape of mountain right there. Don't worry too much about it now here. We'll fix that up later. Right now we're just trying to get these little peaks here. Now you may notice I'm starting higher over here and then slowly getting lower to go over. I'm trying to make it look like it's kind of going away from us. But if you want, you can always have it even or really any way you want it. It's your mountain and it's your painting. All right, and now a clean, dry, two-inch brush. We're just gonna just blend that. Again, not worrying about what's up here, just worrying about the bottom. This helps us get rid of any excess paint we might have. You can already see it starting to blend in with the liquid white. This helps create sort of a misty effect at the bottom now. And this helps us get to think of our angles. Angles, angles. Make sure you got an angle. Because so, if you go flat, then you're just going to have a bunch of cliffs and you don't want that. Nice angles. Go. Now let's uh, let's take the small knife and we're just gonna go into some of that titanium white. And we're gonna create some. Uh, we're gonna create some highlights. Very little paint. You just kind of scrape it on there. And notice that I'm starting narrow at the top and then slowly getting wider as I go down. Oh, 
Also, make sure you leave enough dark in there. You want those are your separators, so they'll be able to create shadow. If you have too much highlight, it'll just look like a big blob. And we don't want that. Just kind of let this flow. Don't try and play in too much. Don't, don't get too much in your head. Just kind of let it happen. Just let it happen. When I first started as an artist, I was just, I thought a little too much. I would like plan for hours and hours, just trying to think how it would look and everything. But after I kind of just let that go and kind of just let things happen, I found it was a lot more enjoyable. And our big one. And if you want, you can go back in and scrape in a little more and all these bumps and ridges. Wherever you think a little mountain goes on with. All right, that was fun. I'll tell you what, let's take let's take a orange brush, and we're just going to make this gray a little bit darker. And right here, we'll just tap along here, on the side of the mountain. Like there's little trees growing along here in the distance. Don't need a whole lot of detail for this one because you wouldn't see any. Now with the second families that I have, I have several, trying to keep going back and forth, I just gently lift that up and add another layer. Just make layer after layer. By fluffing, you just push it back and then now I add another layer. You can make just as many of these trees as you like. Of course, the hip. Here we go. Now let's just take our take a palp knife. And we're sure to do something to stand on. Very little paint here though. We're sure to kind of glide it across there. Let's add some snow there. I thought a winter scene would be nice today in this heat. Help cool us down. Some paintings I paint are just, they look so cold, I have to put a jacket on or something. Okay. And now let's take, let's take, let's take a fan brush. That's still not the white, but it doesn't matter. And we're trying to move more in this uh, gray color, but make it slightly darker. As we get closer, you want it to be a little bit lighter. We're going to get darker and darker as you get here. So we're just going to take the fan brush, load it up, and just start tapping. All right, we have the illusion, the little tree in the background. More. Maybe we'll just go right here. Two inch brush, just start tapping along the bottom. Help create sort of a misty effect. There we go. And with another fan brush, let's get really dark here. And we'll get 
We'll just start tapping on here. Pushing upward. And we love little trees, why not? I love happy little trees. So make your guide. And slowly go back and forth. You can have as many little or as many trees as you like. You know, a lot of big one right there. Why not? Trees are like people, they come in all different shapes and sizes. All right? Take a two inch brush and let's go straight into that titanium white. Grab the bottom here and just shoom. Start laying in some snow. Make sure you pick up some of that blue that you want to create shadows with that. And so we're just, just let it happen. Just let this all happen. Now with another two inch brush, go to some of this dark color and we're gonna create some, create some like reflections right here. Just go straight down. And then across. And if you want, take a little bit of the white, kind of grab that, pull it down. Instant reflections. And maybe we'll have take some of the liquid white just to thin it down a little bit. Mix it with the titanium white. Just to thin it. Because our golden rule here is a thin paint will stick better to a thick paint. Then we'll just Put it across here. Just like you're trying to cut into the canvas. Don't worry, you won't. The canvas is very tough, very tough. Right, now with another fan brush. That dark color again, let's create a, let's make a big tree right here, why not? That sounds fun. Just like we did the other ones, to create a guide, and just start tapping, going back and forth in a Z formation. Adding more pressure as you go down. Now, if you find yourself accidentally picking up some of the background paint, I would suggest being the least bit, I mean the least bit paint thinner, just to thin it down a little bit. We should be able to get it right there. This two inch brush will just take that and we'll drag it like that. Bring it distinctly through. And how about take that same fan brush and we'll just add another tree on the other side. Why not? You can never have too many trees. And just like we did the other one, one of the easiest ways I've found to make trees. I've used several different brushes to make trees on here. I've used fan brushes, I've used uh, a two inch brush, I've used an old brush one time. Any brush you like, I just have the fan, I just have another fan brush right here. And let's get my friend, you know me. I think everyone needs a friend. I'll give you my friend right here. I won't we'll worry too much about that one. It'll just kind of blend in the other one. 
Yeah, let's put a crooked one. Why not? Maybe this one had a tough life, you know, just growing like that, but still a good tree. All right, let's take that. Let me add some reflections. Now watch this. We'll take that color again. We'll add a little bit more black to make it darker. And we'll put it directly in front of that tree. And because we get the darker color, it'll stand out more, it's in right in front of it. That's why you want, with this kind of painting, you want to make sure you're using all your dark, lighter goes in the back, and slowly and darker as you come forward. You don't want to waste all your dark in the back. All right, let's take some to tan white, give some to stand on. Maybe some little water to separate it. Maybe put a sheen in the water. Hmm. Scrape in a few sticks and twigs. You have yourself finished painting. I do hope you try this one. This is a great example of just how easy it is to make a masterpiece only using such a limited palette. And so, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you a happy painting and God bless my friend. Yay, that was so good. Good job. Okay, now I wrote down all the questions that you guys put in the chat and I'm going to read some of them. I'm Wonderful. Them right away. Okay, so the first question, some of these were really interesting. The first one is from Steph. No, it's from Kiara. Ooh. And she said, how long ago did you start painting? Um, I started painting, um, this is Cam, by the way. Uh, sorry to ruin magic, but. Um, I started painting about over a year ago. Um, I, was, um, I was doing a scenic class, and then that kind of inspired me to do painting. Um, and then eventually I thought, hmm, that would be a lot of fun to do, like, oil paintings like this, like Bob Ross, because I was already a big fan of Bob Ross. Uh, so I started actually oil painting on canvas like a, a couple months before my first show. When I proposed the show, I didn't even know, um, when I did the first show, like when I proposed the first show, I, only, I didn't even know how to oil paint yet. I just knew how to, like general idea how to paint. And I was like, I'll pick it up during winter break. And then I did luckily. So that's why the first show was a like, success. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys don't know, or if you weren't here, this is Cam Ross 2.0. Back when we were still in school, in person, he did it once. And Live shows. Awesome. <laughs> the next question is from, and I'm going to apologize, I don't think I'll say this wrong, but for anyone that I say your name's wrong, I'm so sorry. I know how much that annoys me. From Stephanie Chavez, where do you get your inspiration from? Um... For this um, particular painting, I actually got it from an episode. There's like an actual episode he did. So um, I just watched that like several times. Uh, and I kind of did that. Um, I, I didn't really have a script for this show. This is all improv, but like I did like write down like each step. Like, all right, I want to put the trees right here. Mix this color, this color. Uh, but I have done other original works at home too. Uh, but like, it, it's always just fun to make like a to watch an episode and follow along with him. Yeah. That's cool. All right, to the next question from Olivia Steele. She said, I feel like I would be so nervous to do this live. How do you paint so quickly and effortlessly? I agree, Olivia. Yes, I was, I as well was also extremely nervous at the beginning, uh, but then I just kind of got into it and was fine. And uh, it's a lot of practice. The first time I did this one, it took me like an over an hour, I think. And I just kept practicing, practicing, memorizing it. And eventually I was able to do it just as fast as Bob, which is impressive. But yeah, uh, because it's like a wet on wet technique, uh, you can do all the steps like on like one go. And yeah, just a lot, a lot of practice, like rehearsing, like any actor would. So it's like that. Yeah. There we go. Okay, the next question is from Jacqueline Reno, maybe. 
Uh, do you kind of what you just said, do you practice the same painting before broadcasting how to paint it? Uh, not right before broadcasting, but I've been like, I did several paintings. I say it several times. I have like, I don't I have like a, like eight of these, <laughs> the same painting uh, upstairs and it's just, it's taken over. But yeah. I want one. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Vanessa asked, do you have an Instagram you use to display your art? I do. I display all of my um, stuff on at Cameron Alvarez 7. Um, Someone type that in the chat. I'm going to type that in the chat. Yeah. There you go. Uh, there we go. Yes. Follow me. Yeah, follow me on Instagram. I also have a, um, a woodworking account. I do a lot of woodworking. I actually built this easel myself and everything um, at Cam's Wood Workshop. Check that out. Yeah, Cam, you're a technical theater major. You're not. I a am. Yeah, I uh, I did acting in high school, and then I just kind of went into um, technical theater my senior year. And I haven't done any acting in a long time besides my first show. Uh, the only reason I really want to do, I, the only time I really like acting is if I'm really into the role. So this is like, I felt the show needed to be done. I didn't know anyone else who could paint like that. So <laughs> yeah, I decided to do it myself. Yeah. And then Rebecca asked, oh, I thought this question was really cool. Have you experienced painting this specific scene in a different monochromatic color, like red or purple? Do you think that would be successful? And if so, which color? I vote pink. But. Um, yeah, you probably do it like, uh, what's nice about this one is that like, um, it doesn't really have a lot of like different colors. It's very just, uh, you're working more with hues and like uh, different brightness and like, so you could probably easily do it with another color. Um, pink would be cool. You could do red. Um, maybe you could do like maybe green. Make like a nice like forest type thing. Be cool. Could be cool. <clears throat> All right, and then I was trying to make sure I didn't miss any questions that you guys added to the chat other than the prom proposal one. But Christian Taylor, I love you, asked, have you ever thought of selling your work on Etsy? Yes, I actually have an Etsy for uh, Cam's Wood Workshop, uh, where I sell a lot of woodworking stuff. And I was going to, um, after this show was over, I wanted to, I'm actually going to put all, a lot of these paintings plus more paintings on that Etsy. So there'll be a post in the future about that. So keep that in mind. So follow Theater Hub, or if you follow Artists in Black, we'll post it there too, see so if you'll be Artists in Black. There you go. Or yeah, just follow us, and then if you want to buy it, it'll, we'll promote it. Cam's Wood Workshop. Um, that's all the questions that I have. Let me make sure that I didn't miss any. But yeah, these people want to buy your art, so. They'll be up for sale soon. Keep a look out for that. Uh, Luke said, how many of these have you done now? For this particular painting, I've done like, I think this is like my ninth or something, or eighth, I'm not really sure, I, could let, I lost track. <laughs> um, and then I have other paintings too, that are also Bob Ross inspired, but it's quite a few. Joanne said, what are you gonna be doing next? Like what painting am I doing next? I'm not sure. Um, there's been a few episodes that I've been wanting to try out. Um, if you're talking about show-wise, I, I might propose a third one for next semester. We'll see if Threshold's okay with that, but <laughs> I figure I made, I, since I made a sequel, I might as well go for the full trilogy. So we'll see. Yes. I support it. I know I don't decide, but I am deciding, and I see. Um, That'd be lot. Yeah, technically, it will be the last one because I graduate after this year. Cry. Yeah. Star Wars: Rise of Cam Ross. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Um, any other questions? Sad face, sad face. Sorry to bring a end on a sad note there. <laughs> What did you do with Bob Ross? Is the wig heavy? <laughs> it's not heavy, but it's 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 very hot. <laughs> it's kind of I would have kept it on the entire time, but I was like, this is getting too much. It's too warm in here. <laughs> what is your favorite thing you've ever painted? Wait, come on, Kiara. Let's spell correctly. What's your favorite thing you've ever painted? I um. My parents uh, used to have a cabin in Big Bear, and I actually did a painting for them. I painted that from that cabin. You find my uh, my main Instagram. I thought that was really cool. It was like my first like building. It was also kind of my first uh, large painting of like uh, of like an actual like thing. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Also, I've done a few uh, bold and brashes from SpongeBob. So those are also amazing. <laughs> And then Marlene said, how do you keep your shirt white? It's not. There's like stains all over it from last show. <laughs> it's full of paint stains. It was clean when I did my first show. And then by the end of that show, like the Friday show, it was full of paint. I'm a little bit better now. I didn't get any paint on it this time. A little, I got more neat. Apparently, I don't have a lot of paint on my hand either. So I, I don't know how I did it this time. Just a lot of practice. Sell the shirt. <laughs> Sell it for like a million dollars. Um, very nice. Um, is this camera still? <laughs> we will pay a million, so there you go. <laughs> oh, sweet, I already got a buyer. <laughs> All right, um, we are, yeah, thank you.